Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric the Old Jarhead here, and today I'm gonna show you how to get more power out of a 12.8 volt LifePo 4 battery than you can if you just plug that battery directly into a power station like this Opus Mega 1. Now the Opus Mega 1 is limited to 13 to 80 volts incoming on the solar port. If I plug in a 12.8 volt battery and it drops below 13 volts because it's actually above 13 when it's fully charged, then this power station's not going to be able to use power from it. It's gonna say it's too low, I can't use it, so what do I do? And, and this goes for all power stations. The most important factor here is what the voltage rating is on that solar input. If it's rated at a max of 24 volts, then you can't go above 24 volts. But like this one, if it's rated at a max of 80 volts, then I can absolutely go up to that 80 volts. All I wanna be able to do is try to get about 500 watts of charging on this so that if I'm using 500 watts, my battery will deplete first. So the first thing I need to do now is I wanna take a fully charged LiPo 4 battery. And to be honest, this one isn't fully charged. It's close but it's not fully charged because I filmed this video a couple days ago. For some reason, my sound wasn't working. So it's a little bit low, but that's okay. It's still gonna work for us. We've got a LiPo 4 battery, and what I've got here is a 12 or 24 volt step-up converter to 48 volts. And I'm gonna put a link down below for everything I use today, so you'll be able to check that out in the description. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, and we're going to take the negative sides, and I've also got a switch back here that I'm using as well. So we'll take the, the negatives from both the step-up converter and my switch, and I'll show you that switch here shortly. And we'll go ahead, we'll connect that up. And for those of you that have been watching my channel a while, you might notice I'm not wearing a brace. I got the okay from the boss today to quit wearing my brace. <laughs> so I do have some range of motion on my thumb. It's not 100% yet, but it's getting there, so I'm pretty happy about that. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the positive lead. And you can do this just with the step-up converter, but I like to have a switch that I have here, and I'll show you that, that allows me to both see what kind of voltage I have on the battery and turn it on and off. So it's kind of a handy little tool. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the other end, which comes out of this step-up converter, and it goes to a fuse. Now I have a 30 amp fuse in here. Honestly, folks, the MPPT controller on this is going to limit the, the amperage to 13 amps, but it's probably a good idea to have a fuse in there, so I just have a 30 amp fuse. Some guys will put a 100 amp fuse in because these are 100 amp BMSs, but I figure I should put it as close as I can to the amperage that I'm gonna draw. 25% above 13 amps, it's about, oh, 15 plus amps. I don't have a 20 or a 25, so I'm gonna use a 30, neither here nor there. But we then used a Bouge RV connector kit that allows me to make MC4 connections so that I can change this out. If I wanna go from this style connector, which the Opus Mega 1 uses, to say an XT60 or an XT90, all I have to do is swap out these ends, boom, I got another connection, I can plug it into a different power station. That might not matter to you if you're not using one that needs an XT60 or a 90, but let's say, since I'm using one of these little SAE connectors, if you've got one like an AFRI with an XT90 or an All Powers with an XT60, you can do this by just taking their connector that they will give you with that power station that has MC4s. You just connect MC4s to your step-up converter, and there you go, you're ready to go. So let's go ahead and plug this in. So as this starts to ramp up, let's talk about what I've done. Just a quick rehash. We've got a 12.8 volt LiPo 4 battery. It's a 100 amp hour battery, so 1280 watt hours. We've connected it via a 12 or 24 volt to 48 volt step-up converter. So this, by the way, will work if, say, you bought one of those XEMY 24 volt batteries that I've shown in past videos. This will work with those too. It'll take it from 24 to 48. We run that into a little 30 amp fuse and into a battery switch that I can turn on, plug that into the power station's solar input port, and we're already at 220 some odd watts coming in, 240. We're heading towards 250 here. So we're gonna give this a minute. It's climbing up pretty fast, 270. Uh, in my initial testing on the video that I lost the sound on, we got up to 579 watts, I think. 
Now, I'll be honest, I was quite surprised by that because my step-up converter is rated at 10 amps. That means I should only get 480 watts out of it. However, perhaps because the Opus Mega One can draw 13 amps, it's allowing it. It's giving it a little bit over what this is rated for. I'm not gonna say you're gonna see that in every case, but I'll be honest, I was kind of surprised I saw it in this case. Now, I did hear the fans come on. They're pretty quiet, though. We're at over 400 now, 434. All right, we're at 495 I saw a second ago, 490. So we're actually pulling over 10 amps, and if you think about that, we're, we're actually pulling close to 500 watts out of this battery to charge up the Opus Mega One. Now, what kind of applications do we have for that? Well, let's think about this. If you're running a refrigerator and a freezer and they're drawing between three and 500 watts to run, and you don't wanna drain your main battery down and you don't wanna spend the money to buy the battery that they sell you, then you can just take a battery like this, put that step up converter in, and you've got 500 watts coming into this unit to charge it up. And since it has a pass-through feature on here, any wattage that's coming in will get used by anything that you attach to it. Let's try that out. We'll go ahead and we'll put this back on here and I'll turn it down a little bit so that it only draws about 500 watts. All right, here we go. So we're pulling 400 here. We're gonna turn this on. We'll go ahead and we'll put this on here. See if we can dial it up to about 400. Fans are coming on now. So we're drawing 300 watts here. That's about all I'm gonna get there. But we're pulling 500, see that? 514, 515, 518, it's gone up. 530. So now we're running a heater that's drawing over 300 watts, yet we're pulling 500 watts out of this battery. So the, the power station is actually drawing more power right now because it's running fans and it's running this heater. That's the beauty of being able to do this. It's pretty cool, huh? So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off again. Now, there's a couple other things I want to mention before we close out today. One is, one of the questions I'm often asked about using a battery like this is how to charge it. Because the power station isn't going to charge the battery, even if I were to plug it into AC power. It's not going to do that. In fact, if I plugged it into AC power right now, it would use both the AC power and the battery to get this power station fully charged. So that's not gonna help this battery out. So how do we get this battery charged at the same time we're using it to charge this power station up, to get it back up to 100% or to pass through that power to something that we run a run off of it? Well, that's pretty simple, folks. Now, this isn't the best example because frankly, this is only a 10 amp charger, but this is a maximum power point tracking charge controller made by Bateria that I can plug into a solar panel, plug this into the battery, hook it up to a solar panel with a maximum of 30 volts, and I can get up 240 watts of charging power to go into this because it's a 10 amp charger. That's kind of small, so to be honest, this is kind of one of those things that unless you got a whole lot of sun, if I drain this battery 100% and I can only get 240 watts of charging into it, let's say an average of 200, that's gonna take six plus hours to get this fully charged up because six times 200 is 1200. So that would, it would take six hours. But I can get a more powerful charge controller like the one that I've got up here. This one is a 30 amp charge controller made by Bouge RV and it can take 450 watts. So <laughs> that would cut my time down to about between two and three hours depending on how much I've depleted this battery. Of course, I'd need some solar panels to do that. Maybe one 500 watt panel or one of my foldable solar panels that's 400 watts would work and I could get this charged up in between two and three hours, depending on how much I've depleted this battery. So let's do a recap. To get more power out of a 12.8 volt LiPo 4 battery, all we need is a 12 or 24 volt to 48 volt step up converter. An inline fuse is a good idea and I like this battery switch that I'm using, which actually shows my batteries down to 12.7 now because I was already doing this with a video that didn't work. And that's it, folks. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I will put a link to everything down in the description below, so if you're looking to get some of these components in order to do this yourself, it'll all be there. Just check it down below. 
And I, honestly, folks, I hope I helped somebody out because I think this is a great way to extend the life of your power station in an outage. If you've got an outage and you got a battery and you have these components, you can absolutely run considerably longer and you could easily take four of these, put them in parallel. <laughs> See where I'm going with this? Then hook up this step up converter, plug it all into your power station and you'd have five kilowatts of power going into this unit during your outage and that would help you last a very, very long time. So I hope that helps somebody out. Listen folks, I'll drop another video right here for you to check out and I appreciate your watching. Y'all have a great day. The old jar head out.